Hi everyone, Bernard here on behalf of MovieGameNostalgia.com. I hope you're all well. And we've not had one of these for a little while. It's uh, inspired by my uh, children. It's uh, a little <coughs> movie quiz. Uh, and obviously I've picked on films that we used to watch together when the kids were little and as they grew up, etc. So it's sort of, uh, sort of movies that obviously came out or were around in the 80s and the 90s, obviously they're around now, but obviously these, these are some classics. So even if you're perhaps too young or you're too old, you prefer older ones, please stick with this quiz. It's a good, good bit of fun and all these films are main. There's one or two little ones that perhaps are not as well known, but they're all major films and major major hits, good scores, etc. on IMDb. So please, these are some of my... I'd love you to want you to share this with me because we've got a Skype. I've done a little Skype quiz for my lot. So this is something a little bit different. Obviously, I've done the questions, so I thought I'd put it out there for the uh, my little subscribers and my watchers. Perhaps you don't subscribe, but please do so. Please, if you're new to this channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications. Uh, thumbs ups are always fantastic. Much, much appreciated, please. And uh, enjoy all these movie blogs and reviews and poster reviews, etc. that I put out there. Please check the playlist below. Anyway, if you have done these quizzes before, I'll ask them in actual time. I'll leave you a little bit of time to answer the question, but if you want to pause it, I mean, don't go Googling. There's no point, is it? It's just for fun. I mean, there's a massive 72 points in this one. I mean, obviously, you can do it in a couple of parts if you need a break, but uh, I'll get through it as quick as I can because I say I wanted to obviously spend time with the kids. I put quite a lot of questions together and I had a, had a bit of fun bit of fun on Skype with the kids and uh, the memories of an answering these questions etc so I hope you enjoy it as much as uh, I enjoyed it with the kids uh, my family enjoyed it this is this is a little thing from movie game nostalgia and me Bernard to share with you to hopefully you can enjoy with your family you know why not I mean uh, there's a lot of kids kids orientated questions in it as well so please have a go with your family have a laugh and uh, hope you enjoy it as much as we did anyway let's get on with it 20 questions let's get through it please let's start Right, as I said, pause it if it's too quick. All right, question one. It's a mixture of movies and movies and uh, TV dramas. So and there's a couple of uh, image things as well. So you have to look at a picture and guess what the film is, etc. So please uh, bear with me. I'll tell you when that is in case you're just listening rather than watching at the moment. And uh, I'll let you know where you need to watch. But uh, you can always rewind, can't you? Anyway, sorry, I'm waffling, aren't I? Right, question one. First part. Which 1984 family action adventure film had a theme song sung by Lamal and Beth Anderson? So which 1984 family action, action adventure film theme song by Lamal and Beth Anderson? Knock on from that. If you can guess the film, then can you sing the first four lines of that song? And I want you to sing it because I'll sing it for you. And I got, uh, I got my lot to sing it. So just for a bit of fun, this all this all this is a bit of fun. Can you sing the first four lines or sing as much as you know? You'll get a point if you get the first four lines words correct. And the third part of the film, this book, this film is based on a book. It's written by a guy called Michael Ender. Well, I think you pronounce it Ender. What nationality was he? Michael Ender. So first of all, you got to know the film, you got to know the song, and you got to know who wrote it. But three points up for grabs if you get all three. Don't worry too much. Have a guess. I mean, you can guess someone's nationality even if you don't know the other answers, do you? Question two. What year was Drop Dead Fred released? So when did he get his, his release to the cinema? Watch Drop Dead Fred. One of the rare ones. It's popular over in Britain. I'm not too sure outside of Britain, but it's uh, superb. Who's and question the next part of the question? Who stars alongside Rick Mayle in Drop Dead Fred as Lizzie? So, who plays Lizzie in the film? In the third part, Rick Mayle, obviously, sadly, no longer with us, starred alongside which well known U other UK comedian in other TV series such as The Young Ones and Bottom? So, which other, if you're into your British comedy, you should know that. Which, which other comedian? So that's again for a point. So another three-point question there. That's question two. Question three. Which 1994 family adventure involved the children of Bally Dowles and Carrick Dowles battling each other? So they were fighting, two gangs fighting each other. So which family adventure film involved the children back in 1994? On to the second part. Obviously, you'll need to know what, what the film is, if you can think of the film. Second part, in what decade is this story set? 
It's actually Ireland. I'll give you that as if you're still struggling. It's set in Ireland. So if you want to go back and answer the first part of the question. So what decade was it set? And the third part of the question. Uh, the Carrick Douse gang is led by a, a lad called Jerome. But he has a nickname. So this is a, a multiple choice. Which Red Indian Chief is he named after? So even if you don't know the film, you can have a guess at this guy for a bit of fun. Which Indian Red Indian Chief is he named after? Sitting Bull, Cochise, Geronimo, or Crazy Horse? Well, you've got one in four chance, even if you don't know the film. Or well, it might come to you. Question four. This drama romantic comedy... TV, we're on to now, first aired in 1994 and ran for 10 seasons. And it follows the personal and professional lives of some 20, 30-ish friends living in Manhattan. Name the TV series. Nice, easy one. And the second part, if you know the TV series, name the six characters and their real actors' names. I don't want surnames. I want the full names to get your points. So there's another six points up for grabs if you can name both. And I also want at the start of the series the names. I mean, obviously, one or two of the characters could have got married, couldn't they, and changed the names. But this, uh, when the season start, when the series started, season one, what were the names and which were the actors who played them? So I want all to get a full point. You need both all names, please. Question five. Name the actor who plays Ernest in the Ernest films. So what was the actor's name? And what is his full name? Next part of the question. What is his full name? It's Ernest blank blank. One of them's an initial, it's not a name. Ernest initial blank. So can you give me his full name for another point? And the third part of the question, what was the year of its release? So I'll give you half a point of year, year out either way on anything, any of these date questions, unless I specify otherwise. That was question five. Question six, what 1995 film with Robin Williams featured a magic board game? Next part. It had a sequel some 10 years later. What was the title of the sequel to this film? And as these questions progress, you get perhaps more hints and it might remind you what the film was. And quite the third part, there have been two recent releases based on this film. Can you name, obviously the name of the, of the original film is in these titles, but can you name the full titles of the, very, the two recent releases over the last three or four years? So can you name the, the full title? I want the full title of the films for an extra uh, couple of points. There's four points up for grabs on this question. Question seven. In which series of movies did Robert Englund play a slain child murderer? And this was my youngest favourite film, only because it's the only film that ever scared her. She still, but I'm not sure she'll watch it now, to be honest with you. She, she loved the horror films even at a young age, but this was one that did give her a nightmare. So we were very careful after this because uh, she was usually very, very good at sorting fantasy from fiction. But obviously this really got to, got to me as well. It scared me. So poor father, terrible father. And which actor? Made, a, made his debut in this film. So you need to know the film and which very famous actor made his debut as Glenn Lance. And that was his name in the film. So just two points up for grabs there. Question eight. In which 1988 fantasy comedy film did the song Deo feature? Deo. Yeah, you can see what's coming, can't you, with this question? Second part, carry on the music theme. Which song ends the film? So there's also a main song that ends the film that we're talking about. So what was that song called? And the third part, 
going back to Dale, can you sing? And I mean, you have to sing this, don't forget. And if you're playing with friends and family, you have to sing it. Each of you have to sing it. See how good you are. And the winner, the one who sings it the best gets the points. Sing the first two lines to Dale. Question nine. Get your vocal cords back. This is a, a visual one, so I'll have to cover up something here so you don't see it. But I want the name of the film. Name the film. It came out in the late 90s. Get that? My selection of posters. <laughs> and who in that film plays the parts of Satan? I'm not going to ask you the easy question of Arnie, are we? I'm going to who plays Satan in that film? Question nine. Two points up for grabs. Question ten. In what year did the Simpsons TV series first air? So which year was it released? Again, I'll give you half a point of year out either way. Simpsons. Now, if you know that answer, you may be able to guess at this one. It might not be spot on because it never is with these things. There may have been a year missed or a year or a couple in a year, etc. But as of April 2020, how many seasons of The Simpsons has there been? So how many has there been in total? Seasons. Not episodes. <laughs> yeah, that would be a little bit difficult. Again, I'll, I will give you. I will give you half a point if you're within one of it. And the third part of the question: Which female actor voices Bart Simpson? So obviously, it's well known it's a female actor, but who is it? Who voices the voice of Bart Simpson? Question ten. Right, we're halfway there. Question eleven. Another name. The film. This one probably probably even easier. I mean, this obviously had a re-release when I had my little uh, video shot. But, um, I mean, this is so simple. I mean, you're getting kids to play it. If you don't get this one, name the film. <laughs> Second part of the film. What year was it released? Second part of the question, not the film. What year was it released? So what was the initial original release date? It surprised me. I keep uh, I thought it was a little bit later actually. So I'll give you I'll give you a point, half a point if you're within two years. So what year was it released? Don't cheat. And for an extra seven points, yes. And I want just seven names put down. I don't want you writing 20 names down and picking picking seven if you get them right. Give me the seven names of the dwarves. So the total nine points for that question. So I'm sure there's a team of you doing it or you're playing against each other. Just write them down independently. Don't show each other so you can get them all. Question 12. Name this, this TV series. It first aired in 1988 and it features the adventures of the last human alive and his friends stranded three million years into deep space. On a mining ship. Again, I'm British, so think British. Name the TV series. And which TV channel now, now actually carries on the franchise? Which TV channel now carries on the franchise of this TV series? Originally, it was a, a BBC offering. Which channel now has took over producing these for the modern age? There's been one very recently, which I've not watched yet, which I will be... Keen to watch at some stage. And yes, you guessed it. Can you sing the first two lines of the theme tune? The song that starts it all. The first two lines. Three points up for grabs there. Question 13. The Goonies was released in what year? Give you half a point of a year out either way. The Goonies, what year? And this is one you may have to guess. I mean, you may you may not know this. In how many how many months uh, approximately did it take to actually just do the film in the production of it? I'm not talking post production where they're putting it all together, but the actual shoot take. How many months did the shoot take? I'll give you an options: three months, 
five months, seven months, or nine months. So that's the goon. This is quite an epic, wasn't it? So have a think. And the third part of the question for three, another point, who was the director of the Goonies? All right, question 14. What year was Michael Jackson's thriller release? So a little bit of a cross here between, it's not really TV, it's not really a film, is it? But it's, I uh, don't know what it is, really, promotional video. What year was it released? I'll give you, I'll give you half a point of a year out either way. And again, approximately second part of the question, how many minutes long is it? So to the nearest minutes, how many minutes long is it? The original release. There may have been updated versions, but the one that first aired on TV had a big had a big screen and didn't see it on TV in, in the 80s when it first came out. Everyone stayed up to watch it. Well, we did anyway. <laughs> and how old was Michael Jackson when he died? So that'll be the more for the fans of Michael Jackson or have a guess. That's question 14. Question 15. Right, name this movie where the character is sat reading a magazine. Play Duck. Play Duck in his living room. Then he is suddenly propelled into space and into another world. Name the movie. And I'll take there's a couple, it's also known as two titles. I'll take either for a point. Definitely, definitely one of my family's fav most most favourite films. Well, all these are, but that, that particularly. And a lousy 4.7 on Internet Movie Database. So Whoever give, give the film that sort of rating should be ashamed of themselves. Second part of the question. The, the, characters, uh, the, the character's name of the, the, um, the, the first night where this poor thing is transported, he stays in an apartment... What is the name of the character whose apartment this poor soul stays in? So struggling not to say the names here. So when he's transported, he has to spend the night in the apartment of the name, two words. Okay, you can have a point if you get one or either the first name or second name, it doesn't matter. And in 2014, this was news to me, it's featured or the character, the main character of this film, featured in a post-credit sequence of which Marvel movie? 2014. That's question 15. Another three points up for grabs there. Question 16. And then we've got a visual one again. I'm going to show you some characters, and I want you to name this state. Well, it's TV crossover with movies on this one. Name the popular cartoon TV series that these features these characters. I told you there were some easy ones. And as of April 2020, second part of this, there have been three films made. Can you name them? Three movies of them characters. Can you name the titles? If you, if you sort of miss a word sort of here and there, I'll, I'll let you off with that. Don't worry about that. The three film titles. And the third part of the question, well, one of those characters, I'm not giving too much away, is called Angelica. How old is she? In the in the Certainly in the TV series, I think the films as well, but how old is she generally thought to be, Angelica? Question 17, another visual one, straight on to another visual one. Again, I want the name of the movie. Again, not overly appreciated. <laughs> if the um, box office is anything to go by, which we'll uh, go on to in a minute. Name the movie. It certainly wasn't made in 2013. <laughs> It cost 80 million. It cost 80 next part of the question. It cost 80 million dollars to make, but 
how did it approximately how much did it make back at the box office? It got multiple choice. Did it make eleven million dollars back? Twenty one million, still not good. Thirty one million, not great. Forty one million, just over half. So which of those did it make back at the box office? Eleven, twenty one, thirty one, or forty one million? And the third part of the question: What is the main character's real name in the film? What is he known as? What's his real name in the film? Question 18. What film is this? It's a Chris Columbus film, not the obvious one, from 1987. A babysitter must battle her way through the big city after being stranded with kids she is looking after. Name the Chris Columbus movie from 1987. And for another point, Sharon Stone auditioned for the role of the babysitter in this, but who eventually got the part? So which actress got the part in this film? Question 19. Which three actors, actresses, actors, are all called actors now, aren't they, I believe, played the three main witches in the 1995, 1993 film Hocus Pocus? Name of the three actresses, actresses. I mean, I'm old fashioned, three actresses. Three points for that. Obviously, up for grabs on that one. Second part In which town in the US is the act, does the action take place? So, where's it set? Which town? What's the name? And the third part of the question. It starts in old, the film actually starts in old times. So in which century did the movie start? And if you know the year, you'll know the, uh, and obviously if you know things about witches, you might have a chance of knowing the year. So in which century did the movie start? So five points up for grabs in total there. And question 20, the last question. In what year, and we're going to one of another a classic film. What year was the original Back to the Future released? So what year did it come out? I'm not giving you half a point if you're close. You either know this or you don't know. And we've got another little box office question. You have a guess at this if you're not too sure. It only it cost $19 million to make, but how much did it get back at the box office? So how much did it make back? Uh, did it make back 289 million, 389 million, 489 million, or 589 million? So, what did it make back? At the, that's the original Back to the Future. How much did it make back? Approximately, not spot on, but that's just box office. And that's that's without home movies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right, three years were covered in the original Back to the Future, weren't they? But in Back to the Future 3, what year did they go back to? So again, I've got to be careful not to give you, I was going to give you the three other dates, and that would give you a clue for the, the first uh, part of the question. So what year, does uh, obviously, did they go back to in Back to the Future 3? There we go. Did you get those? How would you do? Have a little drink before uh, I read through the question, the answers. Right, zoom through these. Hope you enjoyed that anyway and uh, see how many points. I said there's um, 72 points up for grabs. I'll try and work out how many points I would have got as I go through. All right, which 1984 family action adventure film had a home, <laughs> a theme song sung by Lamar and Beth Anderson? course the film in question was never any story uh, the next part can you sing the first like first four lines well if you sung anything like this or probably better than me so turn around look at what you see in her face the mirror of your dreams yeah slightly embarrassing there you go if you got that right, give yourself a point. And the film is based on a book written by Michael Ender, and Michael Ender is German. So if you got uh, all three of that, three points or whatever connotation, how many would have I got? Well, I would have got the words of the song. I would have got Never Ending Story. I wouldn't have known he was German. I would have probably guessed he was German. But I'll give, just give myself two, to be fair. 
Question two. What year was Drop Dead Fred released? Well, that was 1991. So, again, um, what have I got that? I'm not too sure. Who stars alongside Rick Mail as Lizzie? Well, that was Phoebe, the lovely Phoebe Cates. And Rick Mail starred with another British comedy actor in things such as Young Ones and Bottom. Of course, that was Adrian Edmondson. So, give yourself points for that. Again, I'll just give myself two. I'm not too sure whether I've already got the dates or not. Question three. Which 1994 family adventure involved the children of Bally Douse and Carrick Douse or Dows? Uh, battling each other. Of course, that was War of the Buttons. Super. If you've never seen War of the Buttons, please watch War of the Buttons. Super film. What decade is it set? Well, it was set in the sixties. I wasn't. Sure. I might not guess that. I might have said fifties or seventies. Uh, and Jerome is uh, his nickname. And I had forgotten this. Is Geronimo? His nickname is Geronimo. So I'm just gonna, I'm just going to give myself one point for that. I don't think I would have done much better. Uh, question four. The, which, well, this is the easy one, isn't it? Which drama, romantic comedy first aired in 1994 and 10 seasons, of course, it was Friends we're talking about. And can you name the six characters and their real actors' names? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to give myself seven for this. I would have struggled, but I would have got there. Rachel Green for Jennifer Aniston. This is where you would have had to pause the video. Monica Geller, Courtney Cox, Phoebe Buffet, Lisa Kudrow, Joey Tribbiani, Matt LeBlanc, Chandler Bing, Matthew Perry, Ross Geller, David Schwimmer. So there's all your characters. Question five. Name the actor who plays Ernest in the film. Well, of course, that was Jim Varney. I don't think I would have got that. What is his full name? It's in the films. It's Ernest P. Worrell. So I've got that. Give yourself a point. And what was the year it was released? 1988. So I'll just give myself half a point. I would have got pretty close with the year. I mean, if you said 89 or you said 87, give yourself half a point. Uh, what 1995, 1995 film was Robin Williams featured a magic board game? Of course, that was Jumanji. Uh, what was the follow-up called? That was Zathora, of course, a space adventure. And two recent releases, of course, you've got Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, and Jumanji, The Next Level. So, yeah, I'll give myself four for that. I would have got those. Question seven. In which series of movies did Robert England play? The Child, the, uh, child Slayer, obviously, it was Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, and the actor who played Glenn Lance was, of course, Johnny Depp. That was his uh, first film break. I think he'd been on TV, but that was his first film break. Question eight. Um, 1988 fantasy comedy with the song Deo. Well, of course, Deo featured in the film. Wonderful film. Keep going on about another one, don't we? Uh, Beetlejuice. Uh, carry on the music theme. Which song ends the film? And obviously that's Jump in the Line, if you got that. And sing the first two lines. Deo. Deo. Daylight, come on, we want to go home. So give yourself an extra point if you got that. So that's three points up for grabs there. Question nine. Name the film. Well, obviously that was, uh, I'm not sure if I showed you. That's it. Arnie, End of Days. The very, very, very first film I ever watched in the US of A. Um, end of Days. So that was a, uh, on a trip in the late 90s. That was the very first film I ever watched in a US movie theatre. So a little bit of trivia for you there. Uh, carrying on the from that, um, who plays the part of Satan? Well, that was of course Gabrielle Byrne. So give yourself two. But I would have I would have missed on the Gabrielle Byrne. I must admit, but I would have got the end of day. So I'll just give myself a point. Question ten: What year did The Simpsons first air? Well, it was nineteen ninety. And if you think about it, obviously how many seasons? There's been thirty one. So obviously it includes twenty twenty. So if you knew nineteen ninety, you would have been old sort of may have said 30 or uh, 29. So give yourself half a point if you were close, but a point for 31. And which female act actor, actress voices Bart? Of course, it's Nancy Cartwright voices the voice of Bart. So I'll, I'll just give myself um, two points there. I don't think I would have got all three on that one. Um, another one, name the film, of course. Well, <laughs> obviously it's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, isn't it? I mean, uh, and there's the characters you're going to name for me in a minute or... You're obviously going to know all six. I, I would have pro uh, all seven. Uh, I would have probably struggled. I would have probably have forgotten one, to be honest with you. So, yeah, it was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. What year it was released? It was released in 1937. So, if you said 35 to 39, give yourself half a point. Well, full point if you've got 1937. And the name of the dwarfs, obviously, Doc, Dopey, Sleepy, Sneezy, Happy, Bashful, and Grumpy. So, Total of nine points. How many did you get? I'll just, I'll just say, I'll just give myself six. I don't, I'm not. <laughs> I probably would have struggled. Right. Question twelve. Name the TV series that first aired with the last human lost in space, three million years into deep space on a mining ship. Of course, it's Red Dwarf. 
Superb. My, my many nights, me and the kids used to used to let them stay up late. Actually, I think it used to be on at nine o'clock in the UK. So my lot, the younger ones, were a little bit young, but always. I think it was a Thursday night. We always used to let them stay up and watch Red Dwarf till half nine. So it's a little treat, and we loved it. That was one of our favourite TV comedies, which obviously at that time for me and the kids, great memories. Obviously, Red Dwarf. Anyway, digress again. Which TV channel now shows Red Dwarf? Well, it's obviously Dave do it, and they've just done a new feature film, which has just aired on Dave as well as at April 2020. That's Dave have took on the mantle from BBC. And of course, sing the song. We've got to have a sing the song, haven't we? It's cold outside. There's no kind of atmosphere. I'm all alone, more or less. There you go. So if you got that, give yourself another point. If you've sung it well, and if it's a competition between you, whoever sung it the best, decide who gets the point. 13. The Goonies was released in what year? Well, that was 1985. So 86 or 84, give yourself half a point. How many estimated months did the... Goonies take to shoot well out of three, five, seven, nine. It only took five months, so I, th I would have thought it'd be longer to be honest with you. So I probably would have got that totally wrong. Oh, yeah, the Red Dwarf thing, I would have got all three on that, so probably would have got that totally wrong. Uh, and who was director was Richard Donner. I had for I'd forgotten that as well, so I'm going to give myself a big fat zero for the Goonies question. I'm uh, no, I'll give myself half a point. I might have guessed the year or been out by. <laughs> I've been pretty close on the year, so I'll give myself half. I've been a bit mean on myself there, aren't I? Right. The next one we're going to look at is what year was Michael Jackson's Thriller release? That was 1983. I'm not sure I would have remembered that. How many minutes? 13 minutes. I would have probably said 14, so I'm going to give myself half a point for that anyway. And how old was he, Michael Jackson, when he died? Well, he was born 29th of August, 58, and died 25th of June, 2009, so he wasn't quite 51. So if you said age 50... Give yourself a point. 49, 51, give yourself half a point. I'm just going to give yourself a couple of points to on that Michael Jackson one. Probably would have scraped a couple of points. Uh, question 15. Uh, and the character, of course, reading Play Duck is, of course, Howard the Duck. I mean, how can, again, another one of my, how that only scored 4.7 on internet. I have no idea. One of my one of mine and my children's favourite films at the time, even though it's a bit raunchy and sort of went over the kids' heads a little bit at the time. It was... Uh, Brilliant, absolutely brilliant film. Howard the Duck, also known as Howard, a new breed of hero. So obviously, if you knew it as that as well, give yourself a point for that. Or Howard the Duck, give yourself a point for that. So only one point, though. Don't give yourself two points if you've got both. Um, which character does in, uh, Howard get invited to, to stay over? Obviously, the, the name of the character is uh, Beverly Switzler. Third part of the question. In 2014, Howard featured in post-credit sequence of which Marvel movie? Well, it was in... I must have missed this. I did watch the film, but uh, I'll have to go back and watch the post credit sequence, which sometimes I forget to watch. Guardians of the Galaxy. So Howard, Howard made a, an appearance in that. So please go and watch that if you missed it like me. Question 16. Name the popular TV cartoon series. Well, obviously, this, this is one of the films, which is part of the next question. Is it Rugrats Go to Paris? Obviously, it's the Rugrats, isn't it? The uh, TV series, the Rugrats. And, of course, the three films, you've got that. You've got the uh, Rugrats in Paris, the movie 2000, Rugrats Go Wild, and the Rugrats movie was made. That's the original in 98. So if you've got the Rugrats movie from 98, anything like that, Rugrats in Paris, the movie, or Rugrats in Paris, give yourself a point for that, and Rugrats Go Wild, or Rugrats Are Wild, or something like that. Give yourself a point. I'll be all generous. And, of course, Angelica is supposedly three years old. Obviously, Angelica is three years old. So there's five points up for grabs there. So, yeah. How many would have I have got? Probably I'll give myself three for that one. I don't, I'm not, not sure I would have done too much better. Uh, question 17 again, name the film. This is, again, another one that was appreciated. We, I took my children to see, and they were a little bit older, and they did enjoy it, and yet it wasn't obviously well-loved, was it, uh, the post with Kevin Costner? But I think I don't think my children have been to many sort of grown up -y sort of films at that stage, so I think they liked it because they felt more grown up watching the postman, so I think they give it a bit more credence and a bit more love than perhaps it probably would have deserved but it's a film i love i think it's a great film the postman uh yeah and it, 80 million it only got back 21 million so if you said 20 guess 21 million for its box office you're right and of course the postman a bit of a cheaty question this and the postman's real name in the movie actually doesn't have a name he's just called the postman he never his name never comes up in the movie so a bit of a trick question i'm sorry about that my fault my bag i'm being cruel there out so i'll just i'll give myself one and out. i'll give myself one point i'll just uh one out of three on that one uh sorry for the thing but if you said well, don't remember his name give yourself a point 
by default. <laughs> you can have that one. Right, name the movie. Obviously, the Chris Columbus film. We obviously know the Home Alone films, don't we? But obviously, it was Adventures in Babysitting, about the babysitter. Superb film, obviously, with the wonderful Elizabeth Shue, which obviously got the part that Sharon Stone was auditioned for. So Elizabeth Shue is the second part, the second part of the answer, obviously. Adventures in Babysitting. So I'll give you two points if you got that. And I got that, yeah. I mean, I... Obviously, I think I had a little little crush on Elizabeth Shue after watching that film. And there you go. Well, you know, <laughs> my apologies. Um, so, question 19. Which three actors, actors, actresses played the three main witches in Hocus Pocus, of course, 1993? Of course, it's Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Na Kathy Na Najimi. How do you pronounce that? I'm not sure. Najimi? Is that's how you pronounce it? But I would have got two. I would. My apologies to Kathy. I would. I would. I wouldn't have known Kathy to be honest with you. I wouldn't have got that. But I would have got uh, Bette Midler and Sarah Jessica Parker. And which town? Of course, it was set in Salem. Obviously, Salem. And in which century did the movie start? Well, obviously, it's which trial? 1693. It all started when they got burnt at the stake. I think they all hung or whatever they did to him in the in the film. I've not got back and watched it to be honest with you. So it's the 17th century. That was the answer I wanted. 17th century. So I'll just give yourself three points for that one. And question 20, and the last one, what year was the original Back to the Future release? Well, obviously, if you know your dates, obviously one year it tied in with one of the dates, didn't it? It was 1985, because obviously um, the actual three years involved with the first couple of movies were 55, 85, and 2015, obviously 30-year gap. So 1985. Uh, it cost 19 million. How much did it make in the box office? Well, this was a guess. It was a guess by me as well. I probably would have guessed it wrong. I, I thought I probably would have gone to 489 or 589. But I actually made 389 million back. So if you said that, please give yourself a point. And the third part, and the years, obviously, 1955, 1985, 2015. But in Back to the Future 3, he found himself back in 1885. So 1885, give yourself a point for that. So I'll give yourself three points for that. So overall, that's 72 points up for grabs. Eight, nine, let's tot up what I got. A 47. 47 out of 72. That's not bad, is it? I mean, 47 out of 70. If we get anywhere near that, fantastic. Anyway, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed that as much as, uh, as we did. Please follow me on Twitter for all the latest news at Charles Deneen. It's Deneen spelt D-I-N-N-N and all the latest movie news on there. Plus at Nostalgia underscore movie on Twitter as well. So there's sort of two accounts are linked. So if you follow one or the other, it's, it's no problem. And I'm on Facebook at Burn Deneen with links to moviegamenostalgia.com, which is my little website for old rare DVDs, movie posters, hundreds and thousands of them from the 90s and 2000s. And, of course, retro board games, older board games from the 70s, 80s, 90s. If you're interested in anything like that, please have a look around the site, moviegamenostalgia.com. That'd be very much appreciated. Anyway, thanks for watching today. What are you going to do with the rest of your day? Have a great one. Look after yourself. Look after your friends. Look after your family. And let's all look after each other. And this is Bernard saying goodbye for now. Bye-bye.